Hey, everybody. Another episode of Email and Coffee with Joy Brooks. Today, I'm talking with a good friend of mine, John DePalm. We go back centuries. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Joy, how you doing? And first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for having me today on your pod. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we do go way back. Um, uh, and I didn't talk about this with you as we before we started uh, taping, but I want to show you something to show you how far back we go. OK, so mm. about 30 years ago, you made this for my daughter. Oh, my God. Mm. right I, i'm so talented it's beautiful it it's it is the wow. most beautiful and, thing and, and, and now kind so, of babies herself so <laughs> okay so that was that literally 1992 was 30 years ago and you and i knew each other maybe a couple of years before that so i just want to say that this is uh something that i have treasured um and it's been hanging always in a prominent place in my house. So, so I just want everybody to know that joy is for real because that's not like ordered and Amazon didn't exist then. She <laughs> literally embroidered that uh, for my child. That had such a special place for us. And um, so thank you. Before there was now, podcasts, there was needlework. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so now uh, my oldest daughter is married, no children, but uh, she's living at home now, uh, saving for her own place. So uh, th times have definitely changed, and um, in those thirty years. So, so you asked me a little bit about me to tell me about you, tell me, tell myself about myself. Uh, so uh, I am uh, first and foremost uh, uh, a person who. Uh, really enjoys uh, mentoring and coaching people. Um, also, uh, I am in the technology sector. I work for uh, Salesforce, which is a uh, customer relationship management software company, but it's so much more than that. I just, just for people who are out there who might not be familiar with Salesforce, go to salesforce.com and check it out. So I principally am focused in the uh, education and nonprofit sector. Uh, specifically, my region is Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, so all from Mexico all the way down to the point of Argentina and everything in between. Um, uh, so I am uh, in this particular role. I'm a customer success manager and uh, amongst other things, but um, uh, I do other things as well. So uh, in my, my personal time, I am a amateur stand up comedian. Uh, mm -hmm. I do some writing. I know you're going to love that. Um, uh, I try to do acting uh, where I can. Um, I'm also a, uh, a mentor and coach for uh, young professionals and, and what we'd like to call second chance individuals, right? People who might be formerly incarcerated, who might be uh, have laid off, been laid off of or are at a certain age where uh, they're trying to uh, start a new career or um, uh, just transition themselves and reinvent themselves. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I do a lot of that, that sort of thing. Um, so that's a little bit about me. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. You know, uh, as I mentioned to you before, one of the reasons why I'm in, in tech is because of the relationship that we had. And you acted as a... Um, uh, non compass mentis <laughs> mentor in my life just by telling me things that, you know, at that point in time, I believe, way back machine, I believe you were programming in Clipper. Wow. Take me back, Mr. Right? Peabody. Yeah. yeah you, know, you were, you know, you were real excited about it. You were telling me what you were doing. You were showing me the applications. And uh, this was when we both worked at NBC. And as mentioned, it was in the late 80s and the early 90s that we met up. And um, I was I was really in finance, but I was getting involved. I was working my way into tech. And, you know, tech at that point in time, the, you know, what was tech? It was a punch card. So um, 
I was discovering and, um, um, you know, the pathway from there, there to here is what happened. And I didn't necessarily have mentors or sponsors. If anything, I had people who didn't believe in me and who thought that I was nuts. And in many cases, they were right. But um, it's really very important. And it's, you know, it's important for quote unquote younger people to network, to find mentors and sponsors. It's difficult for the same people to hear it. You have to reach a maturity level. Obviously, you know, someone can um, inspire you, but they may not be able to motivate you. They can't get you off the chair. They can get you dreaming about what's in the room, <laughs> out of the chair, but they, you know, the person's got to make that move. So, um, you know, uh, aside from young people who are perhaps starting out in a career, and trying to um, discover who, what they love and what they want to do and things of that nature. How do you begin a mentorship relationship? And really how different is that from sponsorships? Because, you know, it would appear that they're the same, but they're not. Mm. Wow. Uh, so a lot, a lot to unpack a lot there. Packed in there. Yeah, unpack it, babe. Unpack it. So let's let's look at a at a, at a timeline in in terms of of uh, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion in the workspace because that's really one of my focuses. Okay, and let's and and now let's let's take that out of the DEI space and just look at it from a whatever color the rainbow, whatever gender, however you present uh, in in the workforce. Back in the uh, 80s, uh, you know, we were just as particularly the industry that we were in, we were just on the other side of the Mad Men era. <laughs> I think you know yeah. what I'm talking about, right? So, yeah. so um, there were the the uh, the the phrase was tolerance. Everybody's tolerant. I'm going to be tolerant of so and so. You know, <laughs> that had the, and everybody was like, yes, tolerance. Uh, but that had came with a negative connotation, right? You're in the room now. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> wow, that's tolerance. And we were just like, yeah, okay, thank you for, thanks for all the fish. Um, <laughs> but even in, in that time, um, technology, uh, the internet, let's just say in the late 80s was the thing for universities and scientists and nuclear physics and stuff like that, right? So what we were doing at that time, we were really developing standalone applications that reside on, on the PC. And then uh, the next phase of that was internet work computers. And then on the, on the end of that was like, I remember uh, email, like, wow, I can send a message instead of a paper memo. Awesome. Or like, gee, I remember uh, back then uh, this one accountant person was literally working spreadsheets on pen and paper, uh, pencil and paper. It was crazy. But there's a whole arc of technology that has happened since then, right? And, and it's been rapid. It's been unrelenting. So when you're a young person uh, or a person who's in transition or, you know, a second chance person, you know, it can be overwhelming because you're stepping into this, this universe of, of devices, of language that, quite frankly, didn't even exist. If I had told you... <laughs> Uh, 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 like, okay, uh, Joy, I'm going to go fix this API. You'll be like, what? AP, AP, who? who's Appy? <laughs> now, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, if I say, hey, Joy, you know, um, you know, I'm going to uh, do a TikTok or I'm going to uh, Facebook you or I'll direct message you, like, or I'll text you, like, what? what? What's that? And we all had like brick sized beepers that I'm sure if you're carried in the, in the same place at, at, uh, for all the time, you probably have like kidney cancer by now. But, um, you know, so so times have have definitely changed and sensibility to um, uh, have has changed as well. So when we start looking now at, you know, tolerance has become uh, div became diversity. But that was enough. Yeah, so we we recognize that we have this whole spectrum of of people, but that was typically had a racial connotation. But diversity is now so much more than that, right? Mm -hmm. So we've come a, a long way, but you know we have a, a a longer way to go. But as you are seeking mentorship, 
in this environment, typically what happens is you start with the people who are next nearest to you, right? right. Um, who 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 might be a, a brother, uncle, aunt, uh, niece, whomever might be in this tech ecosphere. Um, and that's great. Uh, but the question that you had is how do I even initiate a, a, a mentorship relationship? And there's two sides of that coin, right? There's the mentor and the mentee, right? So coming from the mentee's perspective, you know, how, how would I start? Well, the best thing to do is to get to know people and uh, in your immediate uh, work environment area or seek someone out in that particular industry, okay? Uh, and just be honest and upfront and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to break into this industry. Um, I'm, I, I would love to have a, a coffee chat with you to talk about how I might be able to break in, right? Or what are some of the best practices? Or if it's a particular company that you're interested in joining, what are some of the uh, 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 great characteristics that that particular company is looking for um, that, that you can share with me that I can then go away and then hone that, that vocabulary or skills or uh, knowledge, right? So there's a number of different ways that you can approach this, but I think that the number one obstacle to the mentee is A, how do I get started? And there's a whole truckload of, of uh, uh, information out there. B, um, who would be the right person, right? And C, um, get out of your own way because, you know, a lot of folks feel that they're not worthy. Right. And the bottom line here is, oh, yes, you are. Right. You know, and you've got yes, to start you somewhere. You've got, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to make a few mistakes, stick your foot in your mouth, realize, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Perhaps I'll do it this way. You know, oh, I wasn't wearing the right clothes. Oh, it doesn't matter what clothes I'm wearing. Whatever it is, you need to go through the motions. You need to start doing it to, to know what it is you're doing. And if you listen in the back of your head and get out of your own way, mm -hmm. it, it would be natural, but it's, it does take a little bit of maturity. Mm. Um, yes. You know, it's, you can't have the party all the time or the fun, you can't be the funny person all the time. You can't be, you know, mm. the one that everybody goes to the, 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 the real um, popular person go out all the, you know, on weekends at night, because that's sort of what I was trying to be. And I realized I was mm. in my own way. I wanted to do it all. Mm. And I was doing it all. And I was doing Nothing. Mm. Sometimes, you know, sometimes that, that's interesting, right? So it, it's a recognition of where am I at and where am I going, right? So a lot of folks uh, who are in, in the position of, okay, I'm a transitioning or maybe I'm starting or maybe I'm here. Now, how do I stay here? Is sort of uh, uh, building out that, that roadmap, right? Uh, a, a lot of mentees come to me and say, uh, well, John, um, I, everybody keeps asking me what I want to do, and I have no idea. So the response that I have is, okay, let's, let's, let me give you a piece of advice. Take a piece of paper, write it in half, uh, and put two columns, right? What I don't want to do and what I want to do. Mm. And more than likely, you'll find out that as the, the I don't want to do column fills in pretty quick. <laughs> and right so so forget about what do you want to do or what are your goals right and I'll, I'll talk about goals later but the bottom line here is if you don't know what you want to do definitely express it in writing what you don't want to do because then that want to do becomes much more focused mm -hmm. okay and we start talk, talking about maturity the fact that you're even thinking about mentorship uh, or, 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 or transition into a, a, a new role or a new industry means that you've got the you, something's happened that put the fire under your butt that that's motivating you to to proceed on to that next step mm -hmm. mm. um it's you mentioned something and I, it just flew out of my head <laughs> but um in many cases oh i remember what it was 
Thank you. Um, it's funny that you should mention that you take a, you know, you write, take a list and you write what you don't like, what you do like, and you'll find out more about yourself from what you don't like than what you do like. That really has been my way. And a lot of people have said to me, you're so negative. I'm like, I need to find my boundaries before I know who I am. So I know I can't go past this point. I'm not comfortable there. What's here and here that I am comfortable? I don't know. Now it's time to discover. But once I know the boundary, then I don't have to worry about it. I don't want to jump off the cliff. Okay, so what do I want to do? I'll climb the mountain. What are you going to do mm. until you get there? I don't know. Let's go camping. I mean, you know, we could discover all of those things. But when I get to the top, I'm going to turn around and come back down. I'm not jumping. The end. Um, See, yeah. Sorry, let me let me just jump in there and, and tell you a little bit about that. So you and I uh, uh, have a, a very different but very similar experience, right? Because there are ladder climbers, okay, that have that know their purpose and in and so establishing purpose, they can establish a goal. Yeah. Right. So my purpose is I'm literally going to be CEO of XYZ company. And so my, that and and that's what drives me in the morning. That and that is an expression of my values. Okay. Mm -hmm. So purpose and values. Those uh, help bring it, your goals into focus, right? Because right. without purpose and values, it's really, you're, you're kind of rudderless. You got a great ship, but you know what? You're kind of all over the place. Yeah. So when we start talking about, you know, our, our common experience, there are ladder climbers. And then there's what I call the rock wall climbers, right? To get to the top, you know, sometimes you take a step down, you take a step sideways, you know, you have to really reach out of your comfort zone where much like Ninja Warrior and, and that that one obstacle with the edge where you're just hanging on with your fingertips and you kind of try to navigate it. That's kind of like what what everybody's experience is in a way, right? Because there's nobody who's just like, yes, they're very few and far between, but straight up ladder climbers, right? One rung after the other after the other. But Everybody's trajectory is different. Yours and mine, particularly, because uh, um, if I talk to you about, you know, how my traje my trajectory has gone, definitely rock wall. So, uh, but but in the end, uh, driving to your your success is, and we start talking about understanding ourselves, right? That sort of like gets into understanding what's our purpose and what are our values that are driving us. Mm -hmm. And those are, you know, I mean, those are pretty important things. And we, um, again, you know, it's a maturity level where you start asking yourself those questions. What do I want to do? What do I like? What do I don't like? As opposed to just doing things because somebody tells you to do them, right? Yeah. I mean, start off, mom and dad said, you're going to go to college. So, you know, I went to college. I came out of college with a degree in archaeology. And I said, I wanted to go to the, the uh, um the school in Athens and, you know, get a master's. And they said, no, no way. I was like, excuse me. And they said, you're going, you know, you're going to get yourself a job and, and, and work in the city. And I got a job and I worked in the city. So, um, you know, they were, they were my mentors for lack of better term. They were my mentors and they were right in a way. They were right in a way. Um, my life would have been, very different had I gone off to Athens and studied there. Um, I can't even imagine what it would have been like. I was very crazy when I came out of college. So I might be I might be dead by now. I don't know. I am where I am today because of the steps I took. And um, I find that um, I have a lot of unofficial mentors out there, people that have, um, a boss once told me for better or for worse, you know, Joy, you, you're the type of person that wants to do it so badly. You get it done. You're looking for the next project. You, you know, you draw, you throw yourself into it and everyone hates you. And I'm like, yeah, it's, that's it. He goes, you know, just understand that's what's going on. If you're wondering why people around you don't like you, it's because you are so forceful. They can't even keep up with you. You're like a hurricane that comes through and everybody's like, get away, let it through. So, you know, 
the thing is all these different conversations was he my mentor no because he didn't step and say this is what we should be doing I, on the other hand i worked for a company where i was given a psychological test it came back and they started putting me into a program and i was like what are you trying to do here i was very uncomfortable so you really need to be ready for it. You just can't, somebody can't say it's time for you to be mentored. And this is what we're going to do. Because my personality is you tell me that it's black and I'm running to white. You tell me that it's white and I'm running to red. I'll do the complete opposite of whatever you tell me to do until I'm ready to hear it. And a lot of people are like that. Um, they're not as extreme as I am, but they need, again, that level of maturity. I think that... Um, the, some of the programs that I um, uh, facilitate, I have a mastermind where I, I talk to different people in my industry, email marketing, and we talk about things confidentially. And um, it's a good stepping stone for people to have those conversations. We're not mentoring, we're, um, we're, we're, we're supporting. But it's a form of mentorship, right? Um, and I'd say that, um, I, I don't, you know, companies may provide mentorship programs. Mm. I'm not sure of them. You, maybe you could speak to that a little bit. Uh, but how do you find a mentor? You're ready. You, you know, you're looking. You're right. looking for a little bit of structure. Uh, and aside, maybe you've been networking, maybe you've been cold calling um, people from companies, you know, that you're interested in, right? And uh, you've been meeting people and now you're like, you know what, I'm really ready for this. I'm ready to listen to somebody. Is it a coach? You know, I mean, you know, that well, mentorship role. Well, it, it, yes. And I think that I would add to what you said from the person seeking the mentor perspective is like, I'm ready to listen to somebody, right? And th that's one aspect, right? But, you know, feedback is a gift, mm -hmm. right? So I remember, and, and, and knowledge transference is a gift, right? So I'm ready to listen is one thing. And the thing that follows that is I'm ready to act, mm -hmm. right? I'm ready to reevaluate. I'm ready to step back and get a different perspective because that is from a mentor's perspective that's what the mentor offers offers perspective from a different uh place a different experience right and mm -hmm. so uh the mentor will sit down there and 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 sort of and and the best thing that a mentor can do is ask questions and then listen listen closely with intention get to get to understanding of what is driving this person? What, what are this person's values? What's their purpose, right? Because the worst thing I had a mentor once is just, uh, 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 um, so uh, uh, what's your goal? And I thought about it and I said, um, I really don't know, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not a kid at this stage. I was, you know, like in my forties and I, dude, I don't know. And then he, he looked at me and said, oh, we need to have that conversation. And I said, what mm -hmm. conversation is that? He's like, so the next question he asked me, is, so what are your values? Oh, I could talk about my values all day, right? There's pictures back there of my girls and my friends and my this and my that and blah, blah. Okay, great. So what's your purpose? My purpose, I had never been asked that question before. Right. So like, what are you trying to what are you trying to get out of life? Why are you even here? And so these existential questions were asked. But at the time, I didn't really understand what the person was getting at. But now it's like, of course, because of, I don't know what's what's driving me. Right. So sometimes mm -hmm. the best mentors can be parents. Right. Or uncles, or aunts, like that immediate circle. However, in my particular instance, I didn't necessarily have anyone who was in tech, the tech industry, right? Uh, or or even in corporate America, right? Because I'm the first person in my family to graduate college. So, uh, um, so really, I was kind of uh, floundering very early in my career, right? And then I remember this first mentor uh, who's no longer with us. He's deceased, uh, but he was uh, amazing. He was tough. 
because always challenging me, but he listened to where I'm coming from, but always challenging me to, to step out of my comfort zone, take that next step. Um, because sometimes early on, you're kind of like, uh, do I really want to do this? Right. So helping me understand my purpose, my values, and then from there, uh, set my goals was very helpful. Um, so that was a long way to get to the point, right? So how do you go about finding that mentor? Well, in this day and age, there are so many resources out there. I can't point to a single one, but I'm sure if you Google right now, I need a mentor. There's a truckload of organizations out there that you could you could uh, connect with, right? Um, even uh, uh, if you're out there and you're saying, okay, so I want to get into tech, how do I do that? A lot of tech companies recognize right from the microsofts to the googles to the facebooks right they've recognized that there is a untapped pool of talent out there degreed or not degreed mm -hmm. right that school, can yeah, fill these know, in high school or you know a non-graduate yeah. all over the place non-graduate right so so they have these sort of like these 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 uh future uh looking uh uh, uh programs out there where if you're so inclined to change your career you can certainly google I want to change my career or Google, Google and say, hey, Google, uh, what are your jobs that are open? Right. What are what are some of the skills? Right. So so as the mentee, the maturity is is not I'm ready to listen. It's I'm ready to act. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, because look, Joy, that's uh, right. You and I have been around the corner a couple of times. Thirty years ago, Weird said. I want to change careers. What we what resources would have been available to us, right? Other than going back to a program at some university or something like that, retraining and going through all of that, right? Now, what for I example, did. right? Now, for example, uh, you can say, okay, I want to become like a, a a Google email specialist. You can go to Google and they have all of this content and training and certifications online, most of it free. Right. With a with a fee to take an exam or something like that, then then you be, you can uh, uh, become yeah, Google want, certified. I want to become a chef. Example. I could take all these classes and become a chef. Oh, you my know, God. There are numerous. I mean, honestly, there's a there. You know, they used to say there's an app for that. Not only is there an app for that, but there's a class for that. There's certification there's for, for that. that. And there's a mentor for that. Yeah. And so so a lot of these programs come with mentorship built in. A lot of these companies, right, you alluded to earlier, have mentorship program. The company that I happen to work for has a mentorship program and I am a mentor. Um, again, talking from the mentor side of things. Um, I have folks uh, sometimes reaching out on on LinkedIn or maybe send me an email or maybe I meet them at a conference or what, what have you in my travels that then all of a sudden they say, hey, John, you know, um, I really like to pick your mind about insert the blank, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, or fill in the blank. So um, really uh, some of these relationships grow to, hey, I really enjoyed our conversation. Do you mind if I touch base with you in a month or two months or whatever, right? Yeah, sure, man, it's on you. Knock, knock yourself out. I'm, I'm always happy to, to talk to someone, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and that that's kind of the key uh, to mentorship, right? Yeah, mentorship, you have to kind of, of, of know how to say no, right? Because otherwise you're going to wind up, you know, uh, uh, too much, right? Yeah. Uh, so so uh, uh, I think that um, from the mentor's perspective, it's uh, it's always availing yourself to that young person because that or that that person who's transitioned because they, in their experience, might not have that particular role model that they might be looking for or that particular as they say in the godfather consigliere to help yeah. you think through or that thought partner to help you think through decisions right what is you know i, I had asked before what is technically i mean i know i think i know the difference between a sponsorship uh, and a mentorship that's a great question okay it's the difference between thinking strategically and thinking tactically. Let me explain. Mm. So tactical thinking is I need to get up that, get over that hill. Okay. So I need to make sure I have my, my, my hiking boots. I need to check the weather. I need to do this. I need to take all these little steps. Okay. Now for right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Right? And, and, and there you go up the hill. 
there'll be challenges along the way. There might be a raccoon or there might be a snake or there might be a grizzly bear, in which case you turn around, haul ass and find another way out. Right? <laughs> so, so, so think about that, right? That's the how, mm -hmm. right? Sponsorship is the relationship that you build once you're in the door that opens doors for you. Mm -hmm. that recognizes that you, this person may be an executive, might be uh, someone very well placed in the company. It could be a manager, for example. That person advocates for you when you're not in the room, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Might be sitting in a meeting and going, you know, uh, 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 a project might come up and they might go, you know what? Joy or John, they would really be good in this. Let me throw their hat into this ring. Let me make a suggestion that, that right? Or it could be, um, uh, for example, I'm trying to get to this particular place within the company, right? Um, this sponsor will help guide that career trajectory, mm -hmm. right? So strategic versus tactical and they're leveraged in totally different ways as mm -hmm. as 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 uh the examples kind of kind of talked mm -hmm. about which um brings up the concept of burning bridges you know people yeah. will uh, put themselves in a situation where perhaps uh, they get personally or emotionally or howsoever involved and they'll blow it in an instant mm. and i've been there and i've done that um mm. and uh, they may do it unbeknowingly. Mm. You know, they may just, uh, in any case, <laughs> you've got to be pretty careful. You do need to be intentional at work. I mean, you may be yeah. having a good time and you may be hanging out with people and laughing and doing lots of groovy things, but um, you do need to be intentional and know that people are watching you and mm. you have that sponsorship growing that you may not necessarily even be nurturing. It's happening. People are mm. noticing you at work. And you may go to that, you may go to that manager and say, um, you know, I'd like to talk to you about X. And you tell them everything you want to do and they and they appreciate your candor and they um they relate to you, they connect with you, they they in their mind, they're like, I've got a, I've got a pin in this person. And, and they're going to go ahead and sponsor you. And the conversation is going to come up and they're going to say, uh, you know, Joy is, is pretty good at this. And I'd really like to, you know, tell you about her. And, and the other person will say, Joy, isn't she the one that blah, 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 blah. And you've blown it. The end. It's over. Mm. So you do need to be, you need, you, you know, it's, it's kind of a drag, especially with all the social that goes on and, you know, people... Mm doing all this free stuff on social and, and acting up and, and being themselves. I'm not saying you can't be yourself. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying you can't be true to your values. All mm. of those things are true. You just need to be intentional and you need to say to yourself, um, is this going to, you know, is this moment of, of mm. gl glee and happiness mm. worth what I may be doing to myself. And, you know, maybe you can smile, but you don't have to be the person standing on the table making all the jokes. Maybe mm. you can be alone for the ride, but you're not necessarily the one making, you know, making the plans every week, every Friday to go to the bar with everybody. And, you know, you mm. are the one everybody goes to. So there's there are, are a lot of considerations in this world, I, you know, I mean, I feel that I made all the mistakes. <laughs> so today I look back and I say, oh, I know I made a mistake then. And I real, I, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Um, if I could go back in the way back machine, I probably would do the same thing, but in a different way, because um, I met a lot of great people in doing mm. what I did. I just you know, th that, that, that manager saying, whatever you do, you throw yourself into, I was throwing myself into it every mm. time. It is my personality. Um, but I would say that um, when someone is ready for sponsorship, mm. they really do need to be intentional. 
Well, you know, Joy, and, and thank you for sharing and being vulnerable. I really do appreciate that. You know, when we start talking about, right, uh, um, perception, right? Mm -hmm. Perception is nine tenths of everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there is back when we were young, right? First and foremost, the, the dumb things that we did were, were done before the internet. So there's no photo evidence that I know of. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, really what we're talking about here, right? And, and we're touching on a lot of di different interrelated things, as you can see. One thing is mentorship, one th right? And how do I do it? And how do I maintain it? And how do I grow it? And sponsorship, how do I even, what is it and how do I even get one or, or what are some of the things that 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 even does? And again, you can search for those things online and, and, and certainly there's a bunch of resources out there. But one thing that you're touching on, Joy, mm -hmm. that that it's kind of like a trademark is brand, personal brand, right? We live right now and, and COVID kind of was a shock to the system, right? So right now we're interacting uh, in a virtual world. And keeping your network alive in a virtual world takes work, right? And so uh, your brand is very important, right? Because your brand isn't what people say when you're in the room. It's what they're saying about you when you're not there or before you even show up to a meeting. It's like, oh, wow, Joy's going to be here. I know she's going to be able to answer this email question. I know she's awesome and blah, 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 right? That's your brand. And your brand, again, much like the individual is multifaceted. Um, and I think that part of that brand needs to include a couple of key characteristics, right? Is authenticity. Everybody talks about authenticity, right? And right yes. now I'm being authentic with you because this is basically what you get and you know me very well. The yes. next thing is consistency, right? And the following thing uh, that is trustworthiness is trust, right? These and there's probably people out there looking at this saying, no, there's a truckload more characteristics out there and I'm not going to take anything away from you. That's true. But as I build my brand, these are things that I try to make sure are encompassed in my interactions with people. OK, because uh, that is, is very important. Right. It, it's like the old axiom. People may not remember they'll probably they can't forget this face it's this shocking <laughs> they'll they'll remember they can't remember what you said they might not remember your name but they damn well will remember how you made them feel right yeah. so so going into into relationships like you said joy with intention understanding that you have a brand to maintain is very important um if we look at it for example, remember back when Coca-Cola changed the formula? Yes. They, they damaged their brand because they did something and they, they didn't tell any of their uh, loyal consumers that they did that, right? Or it, uh, a little bit more recent, uh, Tropicana changed their, uh, their packaging and their sales plummeted and they couldn't understand why. They didn't change anything. They just changed the packaging. They're like, oh, people walk by thinking it was a different brand. Right. So not to productize ourselves, but to productize ourselves uh, as we move from one place to another, one situation to another, our brand precedes us. It accompanies us and it's left behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and that is um, something that I mean, probably we would have called it something else back then. But now mm -hmm. it's clearly a brand. I mean, um, and and then, I mean, we were, everybody thought that they wanted a job in a company. Mm. Because that's the way it was. Nobody thought, you know, nobody thought, because, you know, uh, Bezos was, was, was a baby. And, and, you know, everyone, everyone thought, oh, I'm, you know, I want to be maybe a CEO, maybe a CFO, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, I, I, but everybody had that company. I want to be in a company. Now it's so much the opposite. It's a wild thing that, um, you know, mentorship is needed more than ever because now it's really about who you are and my and who my uh, lawnmower guy is? Can you can you hear the hum? Of course, he decided to stand <laughs> right there. Maybe I thought 
I thought that was a nest of bees. I can hear it. You know, <laughs> What's no, going on over there? Up and he's, parked, <laughs> he's parking right there. I may as well take the microphone out and ask him what he thinks about mentorship. Um, but we, um, we all thought we would join a company. So we all decided to go to college and we would all come out with degrees in something, you know, engineers mm. or, or, you know, teachers or, you know, we all thought we, it would be something very distinct. And it was, that's the way it was. Now mm. it's um, very transferable and mm. something that people really don't all get is that how all of these soft skills are wildly transferable. So if you're mm. detail oriented, all of the things a detail oriented person can do, just because he's a, you know, he's a mathematician, that clearly means he's detail oriented. So what other things can he do? Oh, he can only be in math. You no, know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things this, this mathematician can do because they, they have a good eye for, for um, details. It turned out that, uh, you know, I could be a proofreader. It turned out mm -hmm. I could code. It turned out mm -hmm. I, could pro I could project manage. All of these detail-oriented things because I'm so darn into minutia and I'm so worried about, oh, what is the process involved these are these are my soft skills. They're transferable. People need to be aware of that as you know, as they are trying, like you said, tactical versus um, stra uh, tactic versus strategy. Um, you need to really get an idea of your skills, lay them out, maybe make a plot of them. Things that, that you know, those are the things you like to do. So, you know, like so, a math teacher obviously they liked math. I mean, there's something about numbers that they love. So they're, they'll clearly say, I love numbers. So, you know, identify those things that you like and you'll be able to determine mm, jobs that entail those skills. And they may, you know, I mean, again, I was sewing, again, attention to detail, all of those things. It's, it, it's, it's, it's flagrant and obvious throughout my life. That yeah. So, Joy, you know, what's right? what's interesting that, that you're saying is um, uh, uh, very true. Right. So you, you start off this, with uh, the college journey. Right. So for a lot of uh, underrepresented minorities and underestimated people and underestimated communities, college is not necessarily an option. Right. So what then? So there's a lot of companies out there, the Googles, the Facebooks, the you name it. And I, you know, uh, that have a. Uh, 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 online training programs that allow you to skill up, right? That's the operative phase, skill up. I remember, because you mentioned coding, and I remember way back when, years ago, you, I was like, hey, Joy, so what are you up to? We hadn't talked in a while. And you're like, yeah, I'm learning to code and JavaScript and this and that. I was like, oh, girl, look at you, right? And you were like, and you are somebody that, that, that I respect in that uh, regard because reinvention yeah, yeah. is what you're talking about right is you were out there and you were like i don't know that whether you had a mentor or not maybe we had talked oh. a few times in that but you had to figure it out right so and then your your career you you transitioned you literally went like that and i remember i remember so so and not only that but you know one of the things about it is that uh you're a woman in technology so you know, we'll talk, we could talk all day about, you know, some of the challenges that you faced in that regard, right? But you made the transition, right? And which is, but uh, my, what I'm hearing is that transition would have been softer, maybe, or uh, uh, made a little bit easier had you been able to, to uh, have a mentor to bounce ideas off of someone. So now that we're in the 21st century and we're talking in this <laughs> digital world, right? Um, the idea that I need to join a company has been supplanted by the idea that I want to start a company or I don't have to start a company. Uh, there are uh, obviously like um, uh, 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 um, commercials on television now for XYZ company that's like all about freelancing, right? Hey, I, you know, uh, I can freelance. I have this skill set. I, I don't need to join a corporation anymore, right? You right now, I, I'm actually quite envious of my daughters because technology is enabling possibilities 
in their lives to date that ne didn't necessarily present themselves or easily present themselves when I was their age. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea, I think, that of joining a company is not passe, but it's it's kind of now kind of like, hmm, hmm join a company, start my own, and, an and, and take a chance. It's an, op it's an option. It's not it's an no option. way. It's, it's like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll do that, and I'll just learn how to start my own company. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. you know, I'll learn what it, you know, what needs to be done in a company. I'll, um, you know, I'll do this for a little while. And we didn't do anything for a little while. We were like, oh, we got a great job at NBC. Oh, we're going to be there forever. <laughs> right? and, that was, and that was the concept, uh, yeah. you know, until the first layoffs came. In, in any case. Um, yeah, but the world the world has changed, and so I much. think that I think that uh, it's it's democratized opportunity, okay, that um, that didn't exist back when when we were younger. And really, um, it's it's put a lot of power into each of us to mm. make ourselves what we want, um, and to be able to say, you know, I thought I was going to do this, but I'm going to do that. And yep. then succeed at that and then say, oh, you know what? I did this and I did that. Now I'm going to do another thing. And now mm. people say, what is wrong with you? Mm. I mean, that's clearly success. Not, yeah. and you the, know, I'm not saying that, that the doctors of the, of the world are boring or, you know, you know, you go into brain surgery and you're a brain surgery for, you know, 50 years. Um, there's nothing in me that's saying that you know what a coward I, it, that's the point is that there are mm. so many options yeah and, and those those options are 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 facilitated by this current technological environment in which we live however uh if we tie this back to mentoring it's like it's like how do i even start right because we we we, we have so many options available to us it's almost overwhelming mm -hmm. right Think about it, right? Back in the day, I remember when you, I, I, I'll never forget it. You were sitting down there and goes, hey, hey, Joy, what are you doing? Oh, this thing called HTML. And it's really neat. And it's all, and, and you're talking about your detail oriented, right? Me and my, my, at that time, I'm like, okay, so I'm writing C code, C++, this and that. And I'm like, HTML. And I looked at it. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't get it because I had such a structured way of thinking. And you were like, oh, this is, this is awesome, right? And, and so, so our, uh, that was then, and now there is so much online uh, education and enablement, right? Mm -hmm. That if I saw all of this stuff, again, back to my list, what don't I want to do? What do I want to do, right? And then that list kind of goes like that. And I revisit that list, trust me, every like six months to a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's, it, it's, it's also like, like, like so so many options right how do i make sense of this and uh, what a lot of people uh, uh uh really need to start doing is is writing their own individual development plan right so that's the that's a, a plan that says okay so by this time i want to be x what do i what are what do i need to to make that happen and it's almost as if you're writing a roadmap for yourself and you're hold, holding yourself accountable to your individual development plan, right? So my, my particular in development, uh, individual development plan, and I will share it with you because mm -hmm. you know, it's you and me, right? Nobody's going to know. The that world. Mm -hmm. no, no. Yes, you're just between friends, okay. uh, is that I'm actually uh, uh, on the cusp of transitioning my own career to become a professional coach, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for for uh, individual and team performance and and all of that goodness. Um, so, um, I actually wrote myself an individual development plan where it's kind of like I started out with <laughs> in my career. <laughs> what don't I want to do? What do I want to do? What's what what are sort of like what are the obstacles that I'm facing? What are some of the uh, what are the values that are driving me? Um, how am I going to keep myself accountable? How am I going to measure? my progress right uh, yes i think deeply in these regards so i kind of wrote my individual development plan kind of laid out a roadmap for what i how i'm going to get to this this goal and again sharing that with with my with uh, trusted advisors with my mentors and yes i do have a mentor to to really um 
actually I have a board of, it's almost like a board of mentors, right? Because uh, <laughs> the way I look at it is like a diamond is just a rock until you, until you carve it and then it's pretty, right? Mm-hmm. So all those facets, each one yeah. of those mentors provides a different, different, uh, different point of view and a different, different perspective. So um, um, uh, really utilizing this, all of these tools that I've assembled to really help me propel me to that, to that goal of where I want to be. So, you know, it sounds to me like the place you start is you begin to network. You begin Mm. to talk with people. um, You begin to listen to people. Then you get serious with people. And then you, you know, you rinse and wash and do it again. And you continue to do it. It it grows by itself. You um, develop a group of people and they could be your mentorships, right? Your your mentors. Your board of directors. Yeah, they could be just associates that, um, you know, aside from your fun friends that tell you you look great in everything that you wear and, you know, whatever, you've got some people, (laughs) you've got some people that actually will say, you know, you look great, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about where you're going. So um, I think, you know, I, I'm a big do it yourself kind of person. So um, I did everything that you said. I did it in some wild order in, in the confines of my own secret life. I tripped and fell all over the place. But um, the one thing that I did do was I sort of over the whole span of my life, I had this head, this voice in the back of my head, perhaps I'm insane. And that voice kept telling me to do things. Sometimes they were not good things and sometimes they were very good things. And um, over, you know, over time, I learned to listen to that voice, to interpret it, to build something around it and basically say, you know what, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to, here's my plan. It's a six month plan. I'm going to, you know, every month or every week or whatever it is, I'm going to check to see my accomplishments here. How do I feel? Maybe I don't like this anymore. Maybe I need to do something else. It's okay. Just keep going, feeling it out with this plan. And as you do it, obviously you meet people. It's very important. You know, you, you can't accomplish anything all by yourself. So got to get out there. You got to get out there. So you're going to meet people. You're going to um, find people that relate with you, find people that make you happy, find people that you make happy. You're going to do all these things. This is what is called life. They say that life doesn't have instructions. It does. You make them. Mm. You write them down. Oh, hold on. I got to, I got to write that one down. That's good. (laughs) I just made that up. (laughs) That's beautiful. So, so, you know, you, you, and, and you can decide that, you know, six months into it, I'm not doing this. I hate it. Okay. So what's your next plan? That's called the B plan. And having Mm -hmm. a B plan is important. So if you're, you know, and you've constantly got to be thinking to yourself, not like, when am I going to jump ship? That's not the point. Mm -hmm. You've got to say to yourself, does this still feel right? Yes. Am I doing Mm -hmm. everything I need to do? No, you need to work harder. Okay. I'll work a little harder. Mm -hmm. What do I have to sacrifice? Whatever the questions and answers are, you go through this. And, um, and, you know, it may be as simple as I want to be a mother. Okay. Mm. Right. So what's my sacrifice work? Okay. How long? Mm. Mm. At least a year. Okay. In the, in, in, you know, six months down the line, how's this motherhood going? I'm loving it. Do you want to do it forever? Maybe, but there's something I need. I need something else to do. Volunteer work. Yes. Okay. So you see how it goes. It's changing. Well, let me let me let me just jump into here because you're you're, you're touching on on on, on a whole uh, uh, new. Th- you and, and I'm choking on because I, I really feel what you're what you're saying. Um, let's get back to 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 how do I even start? Right? How do and and you just said the key word. Um, is 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 do 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 decide 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 analyze 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 right but for the person who's sitting out there right now who's going like yeah i've done all that i'm doing i'm at a dead end i i could really use somebody to talk to 
but I, maybe I'm not working or maybe I am working or maybe uh, whatever your situation may be. Uh, the theme that we, just that last segment we were talking about is getting out there, right? Um, and so we can get out there in our communities. Yes. Um, so we can, we can, you know, do the, uh, the food drive. We can work at the food pantry. We can do this. We can do that. We can get out there and meet people on a volunteer basis, right? So you don't feel that you're kind of sitting down and, 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 and not really making any progress, spinning your wheels, right? Grassroots. Interesting, interestingly enough, yeah. did you know that if you join a volunteer organization, more than likely some high level executive at yeah. some high level company or startup or whatever is probably going to be at a, a board member or an active yeah. participant, right? Yeah. Uh, Autism Speaks, oh my gosh, right? Uh, uh, the, uh, um, I don't want to say who the person is, but they are a very well placed person within corporate America who I actually had the opportunity to talk to. and. Um, uh, make regular contact with uh, via the LinkedIn. So looking for a, a, to get out there to network, why not do good while you're, while you're at it? And oh, yeah. by the way, you can derive some, some uh, benefit by, okay, so yeah, I'm not going to get, you know, chief muckety muck of XYZ corporation to be my mentor, but maybe they can connect me with somebody who would be willing to talk to me. Right. And, 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 and have a conversation about, um, uh, what what my goal is. So bottom line here is if you get out there, you can do good and meet people in the process. These are all good things. It's all this is a beautiful conversation, John. I'm having a great time. I know we could talk for hours. So um, you said something about being a comedian. Oh, <laughs> and <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> that brings me back to the time where we came to work one day and we were both snorting and laughing about something and it ended up we had both seen the same comedy routine well over the weekend or whatever and it was a, co a comedian called jeff bolt jeff bolt with a bloody sock who was a paranoid schizophrenic comedian that started off by just having a basic conversation oh a conversation you know, my wife and then she hates me. And then he, here comes the puppet and the puppet starts to talk. And it just, it went right into the rabbit hole and was hysterical. Every step into that rabbit hole was funnier, deeper, sicker, sadder. And if anybody yeah, wants well, to find anything on Jeff Bolt, look it up. Jeff Bolt, B-O-L-T. Look it up on YouTube. Um, you might not get it, but... For me, uh, the best part about that was um, how the audience reaction, because he was not your standard, okay, set up de delivery punchline, set up delivery punchline. It was just almost like a stream of consciousness of, of, of making uh, hmm, a, a vulnerability, making yes, everyone exactly. uncomfortable. He took everybody <laughs> into a dark place his dark place, but everybody could relate to it. And it was funny in the process because he kept going. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you you would think to yourself, oh, this is it. He, he can't get any deeper than that. And he would. And then the puppet yeah. would say something that was deeper than it was than possibly. And the expression on his face, and then he would continue talking and in the puppet's voice and the hand would go down and he'd have the whole cut. I have to see him. <laughs> but, but, but the, the the real truth about that, what struck me, and I didn't realize it at the time, and, and uh, I actually watched it uh, before our, our conversation. And the thing about it was his willingness, uh, at least from where I sat, there's this person on stage who's trying trying to do a thing, right? There's things that are happening in his life that are obviously affecting his performance, right? And then he unwittingly becomes vulnerable. And through trying to deflect via the puppet, he winds up becoming more vulnerable. vulnerable. And so we're laughing at the situation, but really what's happening is that he's touching a nerve within us. And that sense of uncomfortableness and really feeling empathy for what he's going through. You know, these, and, and, and I don't want to tie this back to the conversation, but I'm going to do that anyway. Okay. 
it's 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 this thing now where where we're given permission these days to be vulnerable, and I think that that uh, uh, Jeff Bolt's comedy was I, I I think it was was before its time because now if you sit down and watch it, we are looking at it through a, a much more mature but different lens than we did then, and 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 understanding now at, at all these years later. What he was talking about then um, is, is I think his it was brilliant. Yeah, well, no, knowing again, knowing our boundaries and to some extent um, celebrating them, it's not mm. really a bad thing. No. You know, I'm using that term very. You know, I'm really stretching it like silly putty, but um, we don't need to be. Um, so afraid of all the things that we are we need mm. to celebrate everything about them and we also need to lean into the things uh that um that that present a big picture and you know we may not all understand that as as when we're younger because we're still you know we're still trying to put on the big pants and and you know do do all the things that we're supposed to be doing and and have fun because that's what you want to do when you're young you know it's good it feels good to have fun it feels good to laugh it feels good to be with friends and feel all these things you know and then it feels horrible when you're left out and <laughs> and you know all these <laughs> but all of these those things are preparing us Mm. For the next phase in life. Now mm. it's not the next phase in life is not corporate world. The next phase in life is standing on your own. Mm. Because we come out of the cocoon, eventually our parents are going to pass away. Eventually mm. our friends are going to get married and move. Uh, you know, we'll stay, we'll stay close with some people, but there'll be some point in time where it's, you know, me, myself, and I. And that's mm. um that's the hard work. Yeah, it, it, you know, as as individuals, Joy, um, we evolve, right? Who would have imagined that, you know, you and I would be having this conversation today? And now we're we were the young, rebellious, and wild people, and and I could tell you stories, uh, oh. but maybe off camera. <laughs> but but here we are on the other side of that chasm, right? You know, uh, old uh, older, responsible, having built our careers, having. Uh, fallen, gotten back up, having reinvented, having metamorphosized, yes, that's the SAT word, metamorphosized, uh, but into the individuals that we are today, right, with the lessons that, and, and experiences, and scars, and lumps, and, 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 and accolades that we've gathered across time, right? So what our families, our friends, all are going through this evolving process because the one constant in the universe is death, taxes, and evolution and movement. So as we are uh, at this stage of our career, we have so much as individuals to offer someone who is now falling yeah. and fumbling and accolading and evolving, right? That's so, the purpose. And, and as you, That's yeah, the new purpose. exactly. So I would encourage people out there who are listening to this to um, uh, open yourselves to the possibility of becoming a mentor, taking stock and inventory of your own experience, having gratitude for the fact that you made it while wherever you are, you're here now today. Uh, and think back, and I did this recently, I thought back uh, to what would have benefited me uh, back early in my career and definitely mentor mentorship was definitely uh, uh, something that really would have benefited me and has benefited me over time. And this is something that has motivated me and given me purpose and is, is guided uh, my goal of becoming a coach. So if you're out there listening to this, open yourself to mentorship. I know that there are people out there that would love to have a conversation with you. So, um, Dude, how can people find you on the internet? <laughs> uh, find me on the LinkedIn at uh, linkedin.com forward slash N forward slash slash D palm one. That's D E palm, like the palm of your hand, number, number one. Cool. And what's in your wallet? <laughs> what's in my wallet? <laughs> how many people, how many people ask you that? 
<laughs> no, Nobody? it's the first time. Really? Nobody's ever asked me what's in my wallet. Um, well, uh, there's a couple of credit cards. I think about $80 in uh, a, a, my healthcare card and my oh. driver's license. <laughs> I've got a Medicare card. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I don't have my AARP card in there, just saying. Uh, I have one of those two. Well, you had to get AARP to get the Medicare that I have. So I have both of those. There you go. It's been a pleasure, John. And I hope that enjoy. everybody listening has had the same pleasure. Yeah. And enjoy. Uh, thank you so much again for having me. This has been such a cool experience. Um, everybody, I just love Joy to death. Uh, she's <laughs> She's been a friend. Uh, and um, forever. I just want to say for, forever. And I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity. Boom. Live, live long and prosper, my friends. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>